Right, while all is rosy in the Irish Garden as we stand, Welsh rugby is beset by problems and as ever problems brings blame. This week, as Lauren Jenkins now explains, the stakeholders of the game in Wales have been making tetchy, to say the least. Well, there's never a dull week in Welsh rugby, is there? And that's certainly the case with Warren Gatlin back at the helm. Now, he was asked in a press conference pre-Ireland Wales, what is the main difference between Welsh rugby and Irish rugby? Why have Ireland become such a dominant force in the Northern Hemisphere and Wales have been left behind? Which isn't a question any of us can answer in 30 seconds. But Gatlin pointed to the structures. They've got the right structures in place. They've got the right infrastructure. And he then went on to say... Um, um, Welsh rugby needs a reset, but I'm not 100% convinced uh, we will get a proper reset within the regions. He referenced it sometimes feels as though you're in a sinking ship and trying to plug the holes a little bit. He also brought up a sponsor dinner and the fact that Alex Mann in this dinner, in response to a question, said that he finally knows what a professional environment feels like comparing Wales to the regions, of course. So this has provoked a debate. I wouldn't say there's been a, a ding-dong, but there's certainly been a public conversation between Gatland and the regional coaches. Toby Booth has come out and said um, that he feels it's a bit clumsy, it was a bit inflammatory. We've had Matt Sherratt saying that Alex Mann is the most professional academy player. He's come across that that was a bit of a misquote and really, at where he is in his career, he should be concentrating on the rugby. So plenty been going on. Gatland came back and said, look, I don't want to criticise the coaches. I just feel we need the right foundations in place which the coaches ultimately agree with though they say they are playing, bringing young players through and they're not currently in a situation where they're looking overseas to be spending big money um, on overseas signing so that's where we have it I think the underlying issue to all of this is Irish rugby have had a clear strategy for success over the last few years whereas Wales you know has gone through a governance overhaul has changed the governance of the Welsh rugby union to make it a union fit to run the game in Wales We're yet to have a strategy Strategy. That strategy is meant to be coming in spring 2024. So Gatlin's point, of course, is the Irish structures is something to emulate, but I'm sure you'll agree there's a big difference between wanting to emulate something and being in a position to. Yeah, th thanks to Lauren for that. I mean, look, G Warren Gatlin has earned the right to say what he wants to say about Welsh rugby, in my opinion. Yeah, but I think what benefit is he going to get from that? Like, the first part of his comment was fine. Their structures aren't right. But he doesn't lay any blame at his employer, the WRU, who are the ones who have been organising the strategy and have failed in their strategy and, quite frankly, have been mismanaged, I suppose. And that's why there was a big reset last year. The regions have bought into now having the financial stability over six years, having the salary cuts and everything like that. So... They were, he was just throwing it back at the regions. And yes, they do need to make improvements, but was that the right form to throw it back at them? And then this week, he was obviously given a rap on the knuckles that he had to go out press this week in a fallow week and apologise. Uh, yeah, there was the reverse ferrets, as they can call <laughs> it, all over the place. And I mean, a young, young Alex Mann was dragged into us, really, because he, of a kind of a throwaway comment. But apart from that, I still stick that, like, Warren Gatlin has to bring this up. I mean, he has to maybe use a, a hammer to crack an egg here to get some sort of... Um, acceptance that they're in a they're in a bad place. You look at the URC table, you look at European rugby, and you look obviously at the international side, which for years overperformed and maybe covered up the structural flaws. Yeah, and it just uh, it kind of just keeps going, doesn't it, with the WRU and, and with Wales, just things that surprise. Yeah, not only um, to still see that they're so unaligned in in the background, but also for their like their um, sort of sort of front of house leader to come out and criticise the stakeholders and include a young player in it. It's it's not only bizarre that they are so unaligned, but for that to do that, and I think Gatland also has to take some responsibility in that he was part of that coaching team at the very top that was very unprogressive with players and in many ways wouldn't be something I would feel strongly about. But the likes of William Pivak was the one that came in and had to pick up the pieces of every quality player being above 30 years and 100 caps. And it was almost like Gatlin played a blinder in that okay. he, he led that team then he escaped and then he kind of is now blaming the regions and Wayne Pivak for him coming in to be the saviour. Um, so I'm interested in absolute... Fiona's point, though, because like power and the power dynamics are interesting. I mean, is there a sense that he should really just be marching up to the WRU and saying, get your act together? That's the brave thing to do as opposed to 
spreading it to the regions. Yeah, or, or, or you know, feedback to the regions um, privately. I don't see why it has okay. to be publicly, other than to see if his own kind of, to get the spotlight off the fact that Wales are, you know, looking at a wooden spoon. Maybe mm. it's, um, it's better to have everyone talking about this saga. Uh, but all in all, like, in my experience, when I was playing on... I don't want to bring it back to the RFU and the RFU. The RFU aren't perfect. And we loved in Ireland to talk about how it's a broken system, but I don't really see that. I think they do more right than they've done wrong. When, when you say broken system, in what context in Ireland? I, just, I feel like people are very quick to, to criticise, you know, the fact that a lot of the players come from private schools and criticise the RFU, criticise David Nusifora, because things aren't perfect. But I think in general, like I felt when I played... Um, like I felt that your purpose as a as a, as an Ulster player was to serve the national team, and like I don't ever remember there being any fights about availability. You think back to Kieran Frawley was supposed to play against Benetton, and mm. then all of a sudden Andy Farrell said to mm. to Leo Cullen, like those co- those conversations seem to be a lot done a lot privater, but there doesn't seem to be much debate. It seems to be like Andy Farrell says this and everyone underneath deals with it. Yeah, but you look at like anything else like that, there's a personal chemistry and a personal relationship building that needs to go on between Andy Farrell and Graham Rowntree and Leo Cullen and all the rest of it, and there does. We don't know what goes on in those conversations, but there seems to be no enmity there. But I think that's where everything's aligned and the strategy's aligned, and that probably comes from the setup and that the union owns the provinces, basically, whereas in Wales, the regions are privately owned with funding from the WRU, so there's a bit of disparity there. But, like, Gatland, again, didn't help, but this week, the, the only player he released from his squad was Tane Basham. Yes, he might be dealing with injuries and whatever going into the next round of Six Nations, but he needs to play ball with the regions as well. OK, so it starts with the WRU. I think so, yeah, and I'd, obviously, Lord Jenkins said the strategy is coming out... In, later in the spring and that'll see whether it aligns and where the structures and academies and players like Cam Winnett and Alex Mann that you know there's more of those players that come through and are in a professional setup that they deem should be professional to step up to international. I remember I suppose from person at home and many of our point of view it's to see Wales kind of coming to Dublin with a chance of winning as opposed to you know just fulfilling a fixture isn't it? Yeah, and it felt like uh, it was funny after the game. Like, Warren Gatlin was quite positive after the game. And it was, it was like, again, you have to pinch yourself if you're Irish because you're thinking, like, this is a Welsh team that's come. And, OK, it was close for a while, but it wasn't a close game. And Wales are, are, are happy. OK, thanks for